my Christmas decorations this year. Well, it's our pleasure, Mrs. Edwards. Yes, ma'am. We thought you might need a little help this year uh, since, uh, well, you know. I know, and bless you for that. But even when Mr. Edwards was alive, he couldn't help much with the decorating. Most of the ornaments have just been sitting in the attic collecting dust. Well, our friend Ethan is supposed to come help too, but we don't know where he is. I'm sure he'll be here soon. I'm just so excited to have you in my home. I'm going to go bake some cookies and my homemade hot chocolate while you wait on your friend Ethan. That'll be great, Mrs. Edwards. Yes, that's so sweet of you. I'll be back in a jiff. <coughs> okay, where is that Ethan? He said he'd be here. Yeah, but you know how boys are. I'm afraid I do. They all have such commitment issues. Hey, girls, did I hear someone talking about cookies and hot chocolate? Ethan, you're late. Where have you been? Yeah, well, about that, I've got something to tell you. Hello. Uh, Ethan, who is that? This is my little brother, Michael. Your little brother? I didn't know he had a little brother. I didn't until a few months ago. I'm adopted. Oh, that's cool. When I told you I'd come help Mrs. Edwards, I forgot that I promised my parents I'd watch Michael for an hour or so while they finished their Christmas shopping. So you want us to decorate Mrs. Edwards' house and help you babysit? Michael won't be a problem. He mostly just sits and reads anyway. Uh, I don't know. I guess. Hey, how about we don't, how about we get started? Okay, let's put up Miss Edwards' tree first. Yeah, I see that box over there that we brought down from the attic by ourselves. Okay, okay. Hey, look, Michael, Mrs. Edwards' tree looks a lot like ours. Uh-huh. We have to have artificial tree this year because Michael's allergic to real ones. Oh, great. Nice. The first artificial trees were actually tabletop feather trees that were originated in Germany in the 19th century. The feathers were dyed green. That's nice, Michael. In the modern day artificial trees were first created by the Anish Brunch Company in the 1930s. The feathers were dyed The makers of toilet brushes. What? <clears throat> One thing I need to tell you about Michael, he's full of interesting information. Michael, that's enough. But that's disgusting. Ethan, do you know you have a giant toilet bowl brush in your living room pretending to be a tree? I don't Ooh. even want to think about that. Oh, I kind of do. It sounds cool. Let's decorate something else, something that doesn't even require us actually touching the tree. Here's a box that says nativity scene on it. This, this now that's more like it. Miss <laughs> Edwards says she puts it on this table right here. Shepherds. Here are the wise men. Let's see. One, one, two, three. There could have been more than three wise men, you know, or maybe less. What? Yes, the Bible does not say that there were three wise men. <laughs> Just there were three gifts brought. We assume the rest. That can't be right. What about the song we sing every Christmas, We Three Kings?
Michael, it isn't important how many wise men there are, so just sit there and be quiet, okay? Now, here's the baby Jesus. You know, with our nativity scene at home, we don't put the baby Jesus in the manger until Christmas Eve, the night before his birthday. <coughs> yeah. December 25th was perhaps not the date which Jesus was born on. What? I said... We heard what you said, Michael, but what do you mean by that? Well, it's somewhat unlikely that the shepherds would have been out in the fields keeping their sheep in late December near Bethlehem. Michael, don't. What are you talking about, Michael? Everybody knows that Jesus was born on t December 25th. I mean, I mean, we're celebrating on the wrong day. My, do, girls, now girls, don't ever make Michael's just <coughs> mistaken, aren't you, Michael? He did. Have you ever known me to be mistaken? Good point. <laughs> according to this, according to this book, Chris Smith and Busters. The most likely time for Jesus to be born is around <coughs> April or May, or even late in the summer. That's when the shepherds can watch over the flocks. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. I'm glad we don't have to, wool have to wear a wool coat like our sheep. Me too. Hey, after work, why don't we go for a swim? Yeah, I brought my trunks. Brought my beach toys and my floaties. Really? You were floating? Really? Oh, world. 
celebrate his birthday on December 25th then. Lily, don't ask him any more questions, please. <coughs> well, in 273 A.D., some Christians decided to celebrate the birth of Christ on a day which we have already celebrated in the beginning of winter. What you mean? Most like yes, most likely not even a Christian holiday. Oh no, that can't be. What are we going to do? We can't keep on celebrating on the wrong day with the wrong amount of wise men. And girls don't know Brad Michael just a little well, you know, out there. No, I need to go somewhere and figure this out. Come on, Lily. I'll go with you. Thanks a lot, bro. You've ruined Christmas for everyone. What? Huh? I did? Yeah, bro. Come on. Let's go home and see if Mom, Mom and Dad are doing yeah. Christmas shopping. This is the last time I'm letting you take along. But what about Mrs. Come on. Children, cookies, and my homemade hot chocolate. Children, Lily, Abby, where did everybody go? <coughs>
real Christmas story here somewhere in the Bible. Yeah, are you looking in the New Testament, Lily? Of course. Try Matthew or Mark. No, it's Luke. I think I remember the Christmas story. It said Luke somewhere. Here it is, Luke 2. Okay, read it. Okay, and it came to pass those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Skip on down. Okay, verse 3. And Joseph also went up for Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Skip on down. All right, verse 5. To be taxed with Mary, Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. So far, so good. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Okay, great. At least we know that it was it was in Bethlehem and his mother's name is Mary and her husband and her husband's name is Joseph and there is an innkeeper. Innkeeper? It doesn't say anything about an innkeeper. There's got to be an innkeeper. There's always an innkeeper at the Christmas pageants at church. And his only line is, he says, no room. You mean it's not there? Nope. It says because there's no room for them in the inn, but it doesn't mention any innkeeper at all. That is just wrong. What other Christmas myths can we bust today? The rest of it looks pretty much like we thought. Are you sure? Let me read this time. Okay, here, start with verse 8. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angels of them were came, and the glory of God shone around them. And they were sore afraid. I love this next part. And, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring thee good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is a Savior is born in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord. Okay, let me read. Verse 13, And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. What? Read that part about the heavenly hosts again. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Stop. It says saying, not singing? Yes. Didn't you always think the angels sang glory to God in the highest? And yeah, they always do in the Christmas pageant. Apparently, another myth. Fields below, sheep are with them toe to toe, waiting for that heavenly song, but something's wrong, they're just saying.
well, there's the wise men. <coughs> three, less, or more. But then the December 25th thing, was Jesus really born that day? No singing angels and no innkeeper. Don't forget to think about the giant giant toilet brush. Yeah, there's that, but it's a Bible story that doesn't lie with what we've always believed that worries me most. True. I wonder if there are more Christmas myths that bring at Michael can find to completely destroy our Christmas beliefs. Speaking of Michael, is he with you? Ethan, no, we thought he was with you. Yeah, you're his babysitter. Apparently, not a very good one. I know, I'm not used to having a little brother yet. For real. I'll say. You know, my parents told me I was getting a little brother. I was like, cool. Being an only child has its benefits, but I was but I was ready for another child in the family, but I also thought my mom was having a baby, this little bundle of joy. That would be sweet. Yeah, now I got this kid, almost as big as I am, who acts like a miniature Einstein and, um, Wanders off the minute I turn my back. Yeah, that's a problem. And now I feel bad that I don't feel bad about him being gone. Oh, wait, did that just come out of my mouth? Great so. Oh, man. First of all, Ethan, he's not gone. Yeah, we'll find him. He couldn't have gone far. Tell us what happened, Ethan. After you guys left, Michael and I left, too. Only I got home and he wasn't with me. Yeah, you're a bad babysitter. Thank you, but I lost my little brother, okay? Well, where was he when you last saw him? He was behind me. Where behind you? On Mrs. Edwards' front porch, I think. Mrs. Edwards? Mrs. Edwards! Mrs. Edwards. I forgot about Mrs. Edwards, too. Let's go back to her house and we'll first explain what happened. Then we can look for Michael. Man, I forgot about a sweet old lady and lost my brother all on the same day. All right, all right here at Christmas. Such a fuss that shepherds would leave their sheep to seek out a savior who looked just like us. What kind of child could this be?
Michael, who are you talking to? Well, hello, children. Hello, Miss Edwards. We're sorry, Rambo. We've been out on you like that. Yeah, we got kind of distracted. You might say. It was my fault. I was the one who distracted everybody with my Christmas miss. I was just trying to be cool and try to fit in, and I ruined it for everybody. What? Now, now, Michael, let's not stretch the truth. We've just been having a little talk about that, haven't we? Yes, ma'am. We've had a fine talk about the distractions of Christmas and how it can keep us from celebrating the true meaning of Christmas. What do you mean? Michael, why don't you tell the others while I go get the hot chocolate? Okay. Well, Mrs. Edwards said... about true Christmas that nobody knows and we shouldn't be distracted by that. So the truth about Christmas is it written, written down anywhere? I didn't say that. So where can we find the whole truth about Christmas? That's where Michael and I were when you when you <coughs> came in. The facts about the first Christmas isn't written down as far as we know, but the truths about Christmas are written down all in God's Word. I'm confused. Michael, do you remember one of the verses we talked about? Yeah, I like the one in Galatians 4. I thought you remember that one. He says, when the time had come, God sent his son, Jesus, as a child in Bethlehem, to be, to be born, to, to redeem us so we might receive adoption to be sons of God. Adoption, like me. I'm still confused. What does adoption have to do with Christmas? Oh, everything. Michael, why don't you tell the others? Well, I was, I'll try. Well, God the Father sent his son Jesus as a child in Bethlehem. That's right. And the child grew up to become a man. He wasn't just a man, though. He was God, too. Good, Michael. And Jesus gave his life for us so we might be, receive adoptions to be adoption to become sons of adoption. So if we believe in him, we we will be sons of God too. We can talk to him like he's our dad. Very good, Michael. Now you've got two dads, Michael, one on earth and one in heaven, and we share them both. Now let's drink the hot chocolate and get back to decorating.
or an innkeeper. Or exactly when Jesus was born. Probably not. There's a difference between knowing the facts and knowing the truth. Very good, Michael. You were listening. That's pretty awesome, Michael. <coughs> Poor kid. Thanks, Ethan.
our programs printed tonight, but I want you all to know, Ethan, Ethan come here, this is Brock McGugan, he played Ethan, Lily, Hannah Grafton played Lily tonight, oh, Abby, Grace McGugan, Mrs. Edwards is Lauren Brown, and Michael was played by Trey Walker. Let's give them a hand. They did a good job, didn't they? Okay, y'all step back. Okay, wise men. We, our wise men were Whit Sparks, Peyton Robinson, Clay Graves, and White New. Ethan, where are you? <laughs> he got sick. He got sick. Oh, okay. Oh, Ethan um, Holmes was one of our shepherds. He had to leave. This is uh, Mason Dugan. He was another.